Six decades after the end of the Korean War, the U.S. is now preparing for the remains of at least 200 of its service members killed in that conflict to finally return home. And some tri-state families are hopeful that their loved ones are among those soon to be repatriated. Tonight, we introduce you to one of those families from West Virginia who has really been waiting for a lifetime for some closure. Inside their family home in Sissonville, Joe Chandler and his wife Juanita sit and wait for Joe's younger brother Teddy to come home. We were always close with each other, you know. The last time Joe heard his brother's voice, I told him to take care of himself. You know, that talk. And uh, the kind of stuff big brothers tell their little brothers. And uh, uh, when it may be their last talk. Try to come home safe. That last goodbye was almost 70 years ago. And that's when Joe was on his way back home after serving in Germany, while Teddy was heading out to fight in a new war, Korea. <laughs> Private Teddy Ray Chandler joined the Army just a day after his 18th birthday in July of 1950. North Korean forces had already invaded the South Korean border. <laughs> And Teddy Chandler and the 35th Infantry Regiment were thrown into the worst of it right away. By November, his company lost ground along the bank of the Chongchong River. Eventually, their lines of defense failed. It was the worst loss of American lives in the Korean War. Very few survived. Back at home, his mother Mary held on to hope. She looked so much forward to thinking that he would make it back. He would come home one day. At first, Teddy was reported missing in action, but then presumed dead. His body never found. She passed away and never knew about it. And she always, she always thought that she would find out something about me. But she didn't. No, she didn't. Time is also running out on Joe. He's 89, the last survivor of seven children who grew up with Teddy. After all this time with no answers, Joe wonders if his brother, who served in what's often called the Forgotten War, was himself forgotten. I feel that they, they did go over there and try, but they got what they could get and bring back, but then they just quit. That was over 12 years ago, the last time Joe heard from a group searching for Teddy. And while the process of recovering remains is still very slow, it's improving. Here at the new Defense POW MIA Accounting Agency in Hawaii, the largest forensic anthropology lab in the world, researchers sift through remains of missing service members using DNA to match and return them to loved ones. This process also depends on the relationship between our country and the host country. In Teddy's case, we're talking about North Korea, which up until recently has been very cold. Thank you. But now that appears to be changing. We got back. Our great fallen heroes, the A recent agreement between the United States and North Korea cleared the way to return more remains of American troops. Do you have hope? Yeah. Yeah. For Joe Chandler, that news, after all these years, makes you. of tears, makes you say it, <clears throat> could finally help bring closure. But, you know, it, it, it's something that you always look forward to, and it, uh, you know, to uh, bring him home and, and put him away. And make sure he is not forgotten as they sit and wait, and now... I pray for him every night. Pray. I know God can do anything. And if it's meant to be, I believe he will bring him back. Back to his family. We just have to wait and see. And Joe. I can just tell him how much I missed him. To give a formal goodbye. His little brother and hero, Teddy, deserves. I would just like to personally thank Pat McClure with the West Virginia Archives and History for helping me find the Chandlers to help tell their story. And if you have a service member still unaccounted for or any other service-related story, I'd like to hear from you. Just send me a message on my Facebook page. And the other part that's really sad to me, Pat, yeah. you said there's still around 7,700 Americans that are still unaccounted for just from the Korean War alone. And that's right. And about 10% of them, Jennifer, 778 of them to be exact, 
are from the tri-state area. So people still waiting at home, waiting for their loved ones to finally return home. And we hope for that family they get some closure. Indeed. Thank you, Pat. Mm -hmm.